Welcome, David Wiss here, Registered Dietitian, Founder of Nutrition and Recovery. Today we're going to talk about the microbiome and mental health. This will be the first of many presentations on the microbiome. Key terms, microbiota describes all the microbes that share the human body space, whereas the microbiome is actually the collective genomes of those microbes. We've known that gut microbes do a lot of things related to digestion, uh, fermentation, synthesis of vitamins, minerals, etc. But now we're looking at what gut microbes can do as it relates to disease and where I'm most interested in brain health, learning, etc. First two years are critical for microbial population, uh, the method of birth delivery, breastfeeding, antibiotics, those are all critical for the development of microbes. The microbes and the brain talk to each other, it's bi-directional. Okay, so we have nervous system links, and there's a major communication network called the vagus nerve, which is going to be getting much more attention in upcoming years. The autonomic nervous system and the HPA access are part of the communication from the brain to the gut. We know that conditions like anxiety and depression affect digestion by way of the nervous system. Uh, we know that inflammatory bowel disease and irritable bowel syndrome are both associated with anxiety and depression. The gut-brain pathways are several fold. Uh, mostly there's uh, neurotransmitters that are produced in the gut and these are communicated to the brain. Things like serotonin, dopamine, GABA, etc. This is the great question. Is microbiota the link between poor diet and depression? And my position is absolutely yes it is. There's several disease states that are linked to gut-brain associations. Things like not only anxiety and depression, but now we have data for autism. ADHD has uh, shown up in the literature. Uh, like I said, serotonin and dopamine are mostly produced in the gut. Therefore, what we eat has a profound impact on our brain chemistry. There's a clear implication that gut bacteria influence brain function as well as behavior. A couple years ago, this study came out which looked at um, how microbes could actually influence our preference for food choices. Authors described really interesting conflict between the microbes that live in us and our own survival. Uh, the microbes want to live and they want to thrive and they're able to influence the host, which is the human, to eat things that enhance their fitness. Um, in a nutshell, um, a, a healthy gut has a wide range of species and uh, if you have less bacterial diversity, it allows for more manipulation, more large-scale coordination, and it's possible that in a state of gut dysbiosis, uh, certain strains of bacteria can be getting their needs met. Possible mechanisms include influencing food preference, um, neural mechanisms through the nervous system and the vagus nerve, a lot of good data coming out in both animals and humans. The authors concluded that there's a competition going on for nutritional resources, um, potentially causing cognitive conflict in the human. One of the ways that we can improve our gut health is to focus on getting more strains, increasing bacterial diversity. Other authors described an ecology principle, which looks at an actual genetic conflict where there's an ongoing evolutionary arms race over access to micronutrients and energy substrates. So there's a competition between host and microbes. And it explains why so many people are struggling to make changes nutritionally. There might be forces that are beyond our cognitive control. As you can see here, there's a lot of factors involved in the microbiota gut brain access, and we will be finding more and more about this stuff. One of the keys to a healthy gut is high fiber. As you can see from this diagram, a fiber-free diet causes breakdown of the lining of the gut. Um, this can cause inflammation, it can cause leakiness, and it is critical to have a high fiber diet to have a healthy gut. Another thing to know is that artificial sweeteners cause metabolic derangements and impair gut bacteria. There have been some big studies that have shown very clearly that artificial sweeteners induce glucose intolerance by altering gut microbes. The question is, how can artificial uh, sweeteners impact mental health? So the problem is the Western diet. It's low in fiber, it's high in artificial sweeteners, it's high in sugars, it's high in inflammatory fats, and the solution really is the opposite. Uh, a diet that's high in fiber, lower in sugar and artificial sweeteners, and higher in anti-inflammatory omega-3 fats. 
I do suggest eliminating artificial sweeteners as well as certain artificial colors. Just drinking unsweetened beverages. Um, it's a really good place to start. We do have evidence that the negative impact of artificial sweeteners can be reversed. Probiotics have shown to be helpful for behavioral problems, not just gut dysbiosis, but mental health. Uh, a recent meta-analysis showed that uh, probiotics are effective in depression and possibly other forms of mental health. We know that when people improve the way they eat, they feel better, but we never knew why until now. Guess what? We know why. When you eat differently, it changes your gut microbiota, and that impacts our mood, which impacts our overall wellness. If you have questions or comments about this, please leave them.